For some analysis, we can bring in Scott Lucas, a professor of U.S. and international politics at the University College of Dublin. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us today. First, what do you make of Iran's seizing of this ship? Do you think it's part of that retaliation that we've been anticipating? I think that's the big question. Is this a one-off retaliation? And it stops here in response to Israel's killing of Iranian commanders, especially at the start of the month in the Iranian embassy in Syria? Or is this one of a series of seizures of ships threatening to close the Strait of Hormuz, through which 20% of the world's oil passes, or other operations, such as drone and missile strikes on Israeli targets? And of course, we don't know yet. What I would say at the moment is, is that what I believe has happened is that Iran has now made the symbolic response for you know to show its own people, uh, as well as the world, look, we can do something against the Israelis. As you mentioned, the MSC Ares, this container ship that was seized, belongs to the billionaire uh, Eyal Ofer. But Iran has seized ships belonging to Eyal Ofer's group in the past. So this seizure in itself is not an escalation. This is not new. It's the question of what Iran does next. And I still personally believe that Iran knows that it would lose a direct military confrontation with Israel, the U.S., and other countries, so that Israel will make a symbolic move such as today, but then will focus on political and diplomatic responses, trying to isolate Israel. For example, calling on Muslim and Arab countries to cut all economic links with the Israelis, a message the Supreme Leader put out only three days ago. So you think that Iran, you know, has perhaps done this to say, look, we've done something, although it's not necessarily the biggest escalation that they could have made. You say it's not an escalation at all. And then and then it's going to end there, likely. I, I say that's possible. Uh, let me give you a bit of precedent. And that is in 2020, when the U.S. assassinated Iran's most important commander outside of the country, uh, General Soleimani, the head of the Quds Force one of the most influential men in the Middle East. Iran's response a few days later was to launch some missiles on U.S. bases with the Iran, uh, with bases with U.S. personnel in Iraq. But they informed the Americans in advance, and that was it. That was the extent of the retaliation. Now, will they limit the retaliation in this case, especially given the U.S. warnings not to go farther, or will they think, no, we, we have to do more. We have to possibly try to have drone strikes on the Israelis possibly a missile strike on the Israelis in the occupied Golan Heights, uh, possibly the Houthis in Yemen stepping up their threats to shipping in the Red Sea. And how do you think that Israel is likely to respond to this, if at all? I, I mean, Israel has made its statement, you know, don't do more. I think, again, if this is a one-off incident, you know, the Iranians have done this in the past. The Israelis know that the Iranians uh, seize cargo and container ships. Uh, you know, sometimes releasing them much later. So I think on its own, the Israelis will not escalate because of this. I think the big question for me is, will the Israelis attack the Iranians again inside Syria? Will they carry out another targeted assassination? Um, I think if they did that, I think if they hit another top Revolutionary Guards commander, as they did in December, as they did in January, as they did in April, then I think Iran would have no choice but to go after Israel with much more aggressive action. So the question here is not will Israel respond, I think, to this with an all-out move in the Middle East against Iran, but will it again try to, to repeat the assassinations that we've seen for the past few months? And what would be their reason for doing that, do you think? What, what has, can you talk a little bit about Israel's strategy in attacking Iran? Yeah, I, I think it's important to note that Israel's attacks on Iran in Syria have gone on for more than a decade because Iran, of course, is an essential backer of the Assad regime as it killed hundreds of thousands of Syrian civilians. Uh, Iran also was using Syria as a position to move weapons and munitions to Lebanon's Hezbollah, one of its key allies. And so the Israelis always wanted to weaken the Iranians in Syria. The change that occurred in December beginning with the killing of Iran's top commander in Syria, General Mousavi, was not to attack weapons and munitions, but to attack personnel. And they did it by killing General Mousavi. They then killed the head and the deputy head of Iranian intelligence in Syria in January. 
They then killed several other Revolutionary Guards personnel before, before that attack on the embassy of April 1st that symbolically escalated things. So it's nothing new for Israel to try to weaken Iran in Syria. The question here is, could the consequences of keeping on doing that spread this into a regional conflict? But at this point, you essentially think that an escalation is going to come from Israel, not at this point from Iran. I think both sides actually are probably going to back off, to be honest with you. Now, I may be wrong, and, and I'll put my hands up if I'm wrong, because we know the U.S. and the Israelis are making it known loudly that they expect Iran to carry out a series of actions. But I think the reason why I think this will be limited is for two reasons. One is, from the Israeli side, Israel's got enough on its hands in terms of trying to justify its mass killings in Gaza. I'm not sure they want to isolate themselves further by risking a regional war. On the Iranian side, the Iranians are acting out of weakness, not strength. They have very limited military options. Hezbollah, its ally in Lebanon, does not want a direct war with Israel. The Houthis in Yemen have been warned off of attacking shipping in the Red Sea by the Chinese, who say it's hurting their economy. And when the Iranians tried to use their militias back in January to attack American personnel in Iraq and in Syria, the Americans hit back. They killed those militiamen. In other words, Iran could try to expand these attacks in the region to show it's tough, but then it might get punched in the nose in return. All right. Well, we'll see if your predictions come true and both sides back off. Hopefully that will be the case. Uh, Scott Lucas, thank you so much for speaking with us today. Again, that's Scott Lucas, a professor of U.S. and international politics at the University College of Dublin.